Hey, it's Gentle Giant. How are you doing? I thought we would just uh, play a little tetherball tonight, have a soft spoken video, and see how it goes. There goes one time around. Did you play tetherball when you were in school? I remember for me it was about sixth grade, and we would play. That was the medicine's alert. Um, so I can put it off for a little bit. We would play um, tetherball in sixth grade. I loved it. But you can kind of hurt people. I think one time I hit somebody in the face. Because if you go down, if you hit the ball down, it swings up. And if you hit it at the right angle, it could swing up and hit somebody right in the face. So... It's a fun game, but also you could hit somebody. You can hit your hand in the in the um, rope, and that that'll kind of rope you, give you a rope burn. Also, you could somebody else could get hit with the rope. But I even like to play tetherball by myself. You just you just hit it and you wind it up one direction, and then you hit it and you wind it up the other direction. Or you could play against yourself. Hit it this way, and then hit this way, this way, this way which is an interesting concept. When I was in, um, when I was a kid, I was an only child. We lived in Greenville, Texas. And, uh, well, it started in Greenville, Texas. I remember the neighbors played Monopoly um, and I really wanted to play, but I was too young. So when I learned to play Monopoly, I didn't have a partner to play with most of the time. And so I would uh, play with myself. So I would set up, and I was, I was very honest, but I would set up me and I would set up the other player and then I would make the moves for both of us. And um, that's the way I coped. And I was hoping to get a baby brother. Because after a while my mom said we we're gonna have a baby. All of our, all of our siblings were kind of spaced out, like four or five years, so. I was like an only child for a while. So when my brother was born, then I had to wait a few years and then when he got older, he was the outside kid. So he didn't want to play Monopoly. I told him, I waited all these years for you and then you didn't want to play board games. So he'd go outside and shoot guns and hunt for hunt for animals and frogs. And He was the outside kid and I was more of the, I like to read books. And I would sit for hours playing games in my room. Um, I had a little pool table in my room that I would play with. And we didn't have we didn't have as many video games back then, so you just had to have games that you could play with. I remember I had a I had a helicopter, and it was not freestanding. It was on a it was on a you had a, a middle base like this, and then it went off to the side, and the helicopter was on the end, and it could only fly in a circle, and then kind of go up and down. So what you do you you power it up and it kind of lifts and you lean it forward and it'll fly in a circle. And then you had a little, you had a man with two prongs on his feet, something like that. In the airplane, if you flew it just right, you could fly it through and pick up the man and then fly him around. But I remember I had hours of fun playing with that. We also had a little bowling game that I played and it was, it was like on a rope again, and so you, you swing the rope. Maybe you guys can remember what this was called. I can't remember. But you swing the rope, and it comes around, and then hits the nine pin, and you see how many you can knock down by swinging the rope around. Anyway, I kind of got off the subject. Where was I going? I was talking about playing tetherball in school. So it's, um, I guess it's a one- or two-man sport. You don't really see tetherball. As a um, as a team sport, and yeah, I don't know if you see, I don't know if they have an Olympics of tetherball, but it has its own unique vibe. So I don't remember. I think once once we got out of sixth grade, I don't think they played tetherball in uh, junior high. And uh, junior high was a junior high was a different experience for me. Up until sixth grade, it was kind of calm. And then in junior high, we had some 
a few rough characters in our school. So I remember getting, I was a pretty big kid, so I didn't get picked on too much because people thought I might've thought I was tough just because of my size. But, um, I remember one time we were out on the football field, just in PE and this kid runs at me from like 20 feet away like an ox and he just runs at me and he runs into me and knocks me over straight from the side or the back and I'm like I don't even know who this kid is I don't even know what I did or if he just didn't like the way I looked and but he just knocked me over and I think he knocked the breath out of me and then people would do things in junior high like you know, you're standing there and they'll come and run, run by you full speed and slap you in the head. It's like, wait, I think um, bullying was worse back then. But it's, you know, bullying always, people always find ways to bully people, which is sad. Um, I went to, one time I got, I got a, I think I got a lick in junior high. They used to give spankings in school. So this kid was this kid was always picking on me in um, homeroom. One day, he um, he actually took a thumbtack and he stuck it into the back side, kind of the back of my upper rear. And um, just sitting behind me being mean. And uh, we went out of class one day and he, he just accosted me. And uh, I was kind of a, I was kind of a geek because I remember I used to carry all my books with me. So I'd have like six books for all my classes instead of putting them in my locker. And then I also would carry books to read because I love to read. And so um, this guy, he um, he accosted me in the hall and I just had enough. I was kind of a pacifist, but I was like, okay, this is all I can take. So I pushed him and I slammed him up against the lockers. He was a skinnier kid than me or maybe a little smaller. And uh, Boom, he went up against the lockers and somehow I ended up with him on the ground after all this time he'd been picking on me. And uh, I ended up in, the, we both ended up in the principal's office and uh, we got licks. One lick, I think. But uh, not sure. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'm not sure. It's hard to even remember. I guess it didn't scar me too bad. But um, apparently I really... I really made him mad because he didn't do anything for a long time, but we were in PE class about, I think the next year, and we were sitting up on the risers, and he was going to get his revenge. So he shoved me. I had forgotten about the whole thing. He shoved me down between the risers, kind of where I was trapped like this, and he just started pummeling my face with his fists. So he was getting his revenge. And then, of course, my nose started bleeding. Uh, about the, that's about the first nosebleed I ever remember having in my life. And the coach came and separated us like I did anything that time. And uh, I don't know if I got we got in trouble for that or not. I don't remember, I don't remember getting a lick for it. But uh, he got me back, and so I guess we were even. So we didn't really have any communication after, after that. He became a pretty popular kid. He was kind of like the popular rebel kid, you know, not the popular, not the popular arts entertainment kid in school, but he was kind of a popular rebel. And I think he became, he got on the student council or something pretty important as time went on. And I was more of a, I mostly just stayed to myself and had a few friends in high school, which is probably common for a lot of us. I wasn't in band or anything special at school. Not too much. I would sit. I love to read science fiction. Love to read books. So I would sit and read books. Well, as much as I would enjoy talking to people, I would enjoy reading books and stuff more. So it kind of runs in my family. But I mean, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with people, but I'm not really an extrovert. Extrovert. I'm more of a introvert. Extrovert. If that's a thing. So there you go. How do you, how do you guys like the tetherball? Is it a nice is it a nice movement for the camera? I can move it a little closer and see see what happens. So I bet you have a lot of school memories. Did you ever get bullied in school? Tell me um, tell me in the comments if you if you have anything interesting an interesting story about school about getting bullied. But I survived all my bullying. 
left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. So um, I guess you notice I bought, we bought a, um, we bought a set of lights for the, um, for our uh, studio setup here. It took us about 30 minutes to get them set up because these, they're huge, huge strings of lights and they were all tangled up. Um, well, even they weren't tangled, but as we took them apart, they were, they were getting tangled up. And then I, we finally got my wife, uh, I mean, Sweet Pea helped me, <laughs> helped me get them set up. And finally at the end, it turns out that, um, they were blue when I turned them on, which looks really nice on the blue background that we have. Um, this blue background is actually the cover for my, I bought a sleep, I bought a, a weighted blanket uh, a couple of years ago. I was having anxiety and it, well, this is an interesting story about anxiety. So I was, I was laying, my wife and I were laying on the bed watching TV and I was just tensed up and I felt anxiety and she put her put her arm over my back, you know, um, or leaned on me. And I was like, as soon as she leaned on me, I felt my anxiety level just go down a notch or two. And I'm like, it's interesting. You know, if you, if you look at it, if you research, uh, touch is one of the things that can, for some people can help with anxiety. So feeling somebody touching you or a weight on you can help calm your body down. So we talked about it. My wife wanted to buy me a weighted blanket and finally went and bought one on, uh, on, uh, Amazon. And I use it occasionally. The downsides, the downsides of the weighted blanket is that it can get kind of warm. So if you don't have the house cool or if it's a hot time of the year, you can kind of get warm. The upside is it just, it feels like you're just being kind of it's kind of holding you tight and it's it snuggles you and it takes away some of the anxiety um and you can get different sizes of weighted blanket i'll put a if i can if i can find the one i bought i'll see if i can put a, a link in the description in case you guys want to check it out and get one um it's been pretty it's been a good one for us it, what they do is in the weighted blanket they put um it's like a sand or a little tiny plastic balls in it. So there's thousands of little balls in it. And then they have sections. So this section will have a bunch of balls and then a few inches over, they sew them in all together to weight it, make it weighted. So if you get a low quality weighted blanket, then all the stuff will kind of, the separations and the, the threading is not, is not as good. And so all of it will kind of shift over to the side. Um, but it seems like ours, mine stays even. So, um, I pull it out of the closet every once in a while and I'll, um, actually the other night I haven't taken any, um, I had some, I had some a sedative, you know, a little bit of sedative that I was taking a few years back and I haven't had any in over two years because it seems like after a while the, the sedative just has, it just causes you to have anxiety more than when you started. So. It's kind of like for emergency use, not really for long-term use. So I, I quit using it and then my heartbeat was speeding up and everything for a while after I quit. But the doctor told me I needed to just get off of it. So I did. And so, so I haven't had any in two years. And then I woke up a week or so ago and I just felt so bad. I thought, you know how panic attacks are. It's like, oh no, I'm having a heart attack. This is the final one. I'm going to, I should have taken better care of myself and, I'm like, okay, calm down. So I open up the bottle of my sedative that I have some of left. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take, take one if I need to. Cause then I could know it's not a heart attack. Cause if it's just a panic attack, then I'll calm down. If it's a heart attack, you won't calm down. <laughs> I've been working out a lot this year. So my heart's, my heart's probably in pretty good shape. I had it checked out a year ago, but I, I am working on my health a lot as I've told you before. So anyway, I had the bottle open and I go, oh, I'm not going to take that bottle. So instead I went into the closet and I got the weighted blanket out, pulled my blankets off the bed, got into the weighted blanket. Like, and I may have put on an ASMR video too. And I calmed down. I didn't have to take anything. Um, 
was going to tell you that the way something about the weighted blanket. I think. Anyway, anyway, this thing behind me is the cover. The weighted blanket has, it's a blanket, but then it has a cover that came with it. But I usually don't use the cover because it's already warm enough without the cover. So I took the cover off and I used it for a backdrop because you really don't want to spend a lot of money on ASMR YouTube videos because usually, usually it's a few years before anything's profitable. So, um, I just can't remember what I was going to tell you about the, uh, about the blanket. Anyway, I haven't had another bad episode. Usually just exercising helps with my anxiety. Not right at the moment, but if I exercise, if I'm exercising on a regular basis, it just, it just gets the body in a certain shape to where it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, get stressed out and panic attacks don't happen as much. So I hope this video isn't too long, but maybe it'll help you go to sleep. I hope you're able to go to sleep really well tonight. Um, I mean, the first time I probably told you this story before, but it's a really old video, but the first time I ever had a panic attack was about 12 or 14 years ago. And I was, I was, um, I learned some things I could have avoided. I was in a training and I was, we were fixing to take a big test for uh, going for a postal manager. I was going into to be a supervisor in the post office. So I had been through four months of training and then I decided that I was going to take the test. So we all, all of us who were in the training program went out to Luby's and I had a big meal, which a big meal can cause anxiety issues. Um, and then I went back we were all sitting in, around tables waiting to take our test. And all of a sudden I just felt something in my chest. Like, well, what is this? And I felt something in my head and I thought, oh, I'm having a heart attack. I'm dying. What is this? I was so scared. And then I leaned back and that's the worst thing you can do when you're having a, when I'm having a, at least for me, when I'm having a, an anxiety attack, the best thing for me is to stand up and walk around. Maybe lift my arms out, move around. And that seems to alleviate it some. And a lot of times it'll go away in 10 minutes. But I laid down and then I, and then, and then I ended up laying on the floor. And they called 911, which was kind of embarrassing. Here I am with all the people getting ready to take my postal test. And I don't think I was that stressed out about the test, but it was a little bit stressful. So I ended up going to the hospital and the person from the the person from the post office training program came in and visited me and they put this uh, device on me for a week, for a couple of days to check my heart and my heart, everything was okay. And it was my first experience with panic attack or panic disorder. And I've had it off and on throughout the years, but I've learned to control it, um, using various means, exercise, making sure I get enough sleep, not eating a really big meal before I go to bed that affects my sleep. So it seems like it's basically, some people's bodies are more imbalanced than others. And, and they, uh, they deal with these kind of issues. But if you've never had a panic attack, it's easy to look at other people and just go, well, what is, what, what's wrong with you? You know, why do you, what's wrong? What you're weird. Cause before, before I had my first one, I, I never, I thought a panic attack was just people that were getting kind of bingy. They're like, Whoa, I can't handle life. And so when something happens to you, you kind of come to, come to an understanding of, um, a different, a deeper understanding about life. And that's why, you know, a lot of times people who are older, they're, um, if they let themselves change as life goes, people that are older and a little bit wiser are more merciful, uh, because you realize after a while that you don't know all the problems that people have in life. You have more experiences you have failures and that, that humbles you and makes you more, uh, more resilient and more, more patient with other people. So we all have our difficulties and our struggles and our, and our, uh, almost everybody has some sickness. You know, you think you're the only one that's sick or the only one that has anxiety and then you meet somebody 
often, you know, they have a worse problem than you do. We, we all have difficult stuff. And I think the question in life is, what do we do with the situation we're given? And I believe that we're going to be rewarded. You may not, we may not get our rewards all in this life, but I believe we're going to be rewarded in the next life for, um, for the way we cared for the people around us and the kind of things that we do. And, uh, so it all is going to be balanced out in the end. How about that? So we talked about bullying and we talked about tetherball talked about a weighted blanket and anxiety. So I didn't know really what I was going to talk about except tetherball when I started, but I guess I just rambled, which is the definition of rambling. So I just want to invite you, if you enjoy the ramble and the video, to subscribe to the channel. And if you want, you can click the little bell that'll send you notifications. Um, and we appreciate you watching and being a part. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.